In this video, I'm going to be going through how to calculate the mean and the variance of normal distribution. Now, of course, you would obviously know that the mean and the variance is mu and sigma squared. But the question is, what I'm trying to show here is how do I do, do that through, show that through integration. Okay, so to do that, let me start off by saying this is, my, is the PDF of a normal distribution. So you can look this up on Wikipedia, um, but it's a well-known thing. Um, okay, so I'm going to write sigma. So some people prefer to write sigma squared under, underneath the square root sign, but I prefer to write sigma over there. And then in here, uh, again, so slightly, well, I, I prefer writing this notation. Okay, so x minus mean over the standard deviation, all squared. Okay, all right, so we set out the basics. Uh, let's go ahead and start integrating. All right, so to get the expectation, that's that's the easier part, is you had to go e of x, right? So e of x is simply x px dx, right? So, um, and the limits, so the limits are quite important. It's gonna be between negative infinity to infinity. Okay, um, right, now before I get started, let's, let's, let me do a couple of things. Let me say that instead replace z, uh, well, this is going to be a substitution variable, is x minus mu on sigma. We know from here that dz is going to be dx on sigma. Okay, That's kind of why I wrote the sigma over here instead of sigma squared. Um, taking Rearranging this, I will get x is equal to mu plus sigma z. And of course, when x is negative infinity, z will be negative infinity. When x is infinity, z is infinity. So let's get started. Um, so the integral goes a little bit like this. So instead of this thing, I will write mu plus sigma z multiplied by one on, so one on square root two pi. I'm going to take this sigma against my dx, all right? So I will have in, in here, I will have exponential minus half z squared. And for now, or the dx on sigma that I had, this part over here will become my dz, right? So dz is dx on sigma. So I can just replace that dz. If you're, if you're comfortable with that, just replace it straight away. Okay, and the limits as usual. Okay. All right. Um, so we are halfway there. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to separate this out thanks to this thing. So I will have mu times integral of between the limits of one square root two pi, exponential of negative half z squared, dz plus sigma. I'll take the sigma outside, but the z, of course, you have to leave it inside. I have exponential of negative half z squared dz on your space there. okay all right now what's really important to realize is this thing over here is a normal distribution so what's inside sorry is a normal distribution uh, with mean zero and variance one you can confirm that if i was to look up here so if i put zero over there and one over there i'll get exactly this and if you were to integrate the entire pdf what do you get you get one Right, so this all of it goes to one. So because I'm integrated between negative infinity to infinity, so the whole range, it has to be equal to one because the sum of probabilities sum up to one. Now this one, uh, so not that's not so uh, straightforward. Well, you, you have to inter do an inter integral step. So for this thing over here, I will end up with sigma times. In here, it sorry, I forgot the square root two pi. Uh, I will end up with 1 on square root 2 pi times exponential of negative half z squared. And one more thing that I forgot, I should have put a negative sign up here. So you can differentiate this and, and check and make sure that you end up back here. Okay. All right. So let, let, let's not cramp everything in. So, so far, what I have is, so I just put an equal sign there. So this is going to be equal to, um, so the first term is going to be mu, 
and the second term will be plus sigma. And when I put the limits of infinity and negative infinity back in here, if I put infinity in there, remember you're squaring it as well, so I'll have negative exponential negative infinity squared, and that's going to be zero. Same, it's the same story when I put negative infinity because you're squaring it. The sign doesn't matter, right? So in the end, it will I will just end up getting sigma times zero, so it's equal to mu. Okay, as you expected, the mean is just mu. All right, let's keep going. Um, so the next part that we need to worry about is how do I find the variance? Now to find the variance of x, I'm, I'm going to do this thing. I'm, I'm going to go e of x squared minus e of x, so the mean, all squared. Okay, so, so this is a pretty standard result, so I'm going to be using that over here. Okay, so the first thing, e of x squared, which is a matter of finding x squared uh, p of x dx. Now, I am going to use th this thing again, right? So therefore, let me re rewrite what x squared is going to be. So x squared is going to be mu squared plus 2, uh, two mu sigma z plus sigma squared z squared, right? And the rest of th these things, I will reuse them. So coming back here, uh, let me rewrite e of x squared as being equal to, um, I'm going to do the separating step straight away. So what I mean by is the whole adding up thing. So this will end up being integral, so mu squared integral of px dx, right? Uh, p, sorry, pz dz, I should say, right? So because I've, I've uh, introduced a z notation over here. Um, and then the next term will be plus 2 mu sigma z pz dz. And the last term will be plus sigma squared integral of z squared pz dz. Okay, all right, so I think we're almost done. Now, as, as usual, this term over here is going to go to 1, right? So that, that was the easy part. This thing over here, we kind of did that before, right? So, and again, remember the limits are between infinity to negative infinity. So the second term, uh, actually, yeah, all right. So, so I have mu squared plus two mu sigma, and then integral of exponential of negative a half z squared square root 2 pi, but again from infinity to negative infinity. Right. So integrating this one, the uh, so this part will go to zero. Now to integrate this one, we need to be using by parts. Right? So let me just write that part down. So let's, let's just focus on that separately. Uh, right, so what I have is integral of z squared exponential of negative a half z squared d oops z squared dz on square root 2 pi okay so um to uh to do pi parts i'm going to say u is equal to z and my b dash is going to be z exp exponential of negative half z squared so integrating this one i will end up getting negative exponential of negative half z squared I'm ignoring the square root 2 pi because it's just a constant. U dash equals 1. Okay, all right. So um, so we're almost done. We're almost there. Now, the integral of that will end up being... Uh, so I'll take this 1 on square root 2 pi outside. And I will end up having... The first term is going to be z negative half z squared from infinity to negative infinity. The second term will end up being plus, uh, well, what do we have? So we will end up having uh, bah, 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 to be integral of exponential negative half z squared dz. Okay, so infinity, negative infinity. Okay, um, 
right this thing over here will go to zero the reason is sure yes it's true that z is going to go to infinity and this is going to go to zero but the exponential goes to zero much faster than z goes to infinity right so exponential goes to zero much faster than z goes to infinity. so that's why this is going to go to zero so same story when i plug in uh, negative infinity now, when I put the square root 2 pi back in here, right, that's just, a, again, a normal distribution. So this will equal to 1. All right, so um, I, I hope that makes sense. So the same trick that we did a bit before, that will go to 1. So coming back to my e of x squared, the terms that we have so far from back here. So I said this, this goes to 0. The integral that I just did was this one, right? So I will end up having mu squared plus, well, zero, I'm not going to bother writing that, plus sigma squared times, times one, right? So times this thing. So there you go. And finally, to finalize the variance of x, this will end up being mu squared plus sigma squared minus mu squared, right? So we're using this formula over here. Okay, and so we end up at sigma squared. Okay, so that's it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Um, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.